What's going on guys? This is Jake from Fish Tech and today I wanted to just talk to you guys about this app idea that I had. I kind of want to run you through everything that I've done up to this point, whether that's market research or just research in general into creating this app. And I'm just looking for some genuine, honest feedback. Is this app a good idea? What do you think? Um, do you think somebody might be willing to pay for this? And, you know, I'm all for community contributions, trust me, <laughs> but I spoke to many developers that work in the Mac OS development field, and they gave me quotes between six and $10,000 to develop this app. And so like, that's no joke. You know, if it was like 500 bucks, sure, I would probably pay $500 just to see this app come to fruition and so that I could have it and other people could have it because it's, I think it's really cool. But like, that's a, that's a significant investment. So, um, you know, I would try and at least get my money back for that. Without any further ado, uh, here is the concept animation that I created to show you what the app is going to be. Okay, cool. So you watched it, you know, it's just some After Effects magic, but I think it's really cool. It's an audio visualizer for the touch bar. And I was doing my research and there's just nothing out there like it. And I was like, why is there nothing out there like it? And there's a few reasons. One, Apple's guidelines for the touch bar are that it's not a secondary display and you should not display information on there, you shouldn't do animation on it, and you can look through the, the Apple documentation and it states this. So this app that I wanna make would 100% not be allowed in the App Store just for those reasons. There are other reasons on top of that that make it not able to go in there. But I just see the display, I call it the display, it's not a display. <laughs> I see the touch bar. It's a beautiful OLED display. It would look so good having an audio visualizer on there. If it's done right, it would be really cool. And I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. So some of the market research that I've actually done is uh, I posted a couple things on Reddit. And so basically I searched out the MacBook Pro Reddit and the Mac Reddit and I posted a couple of polls on them and you could see some screenshots of the questions that I asked and basically the answers that I was looking for. And so the conclusion that I came to is, you know, I got a little over 200 responses or something. Um, you can see the Excel spreadsheet here, wherever it is. And uh, about 25% of the people said that they would pay a dollar or more to get an app like this and although the sample size is very small that's not a bad response and a lot of people i think it was about 75 percent of the people said that they would use it if it was free so like that's pretty sweet that's a lot of people a lot of users potentially that would use something like this and so after I did the polls, I talked to a bunch of coders that I know and just wanted to get their opinions and basically decided that I wasn't going to do this. And so the reasoning behind it was I didn't think I was going to find enough people that would want to pay a dollar or three dollars or whatever, uh, and I would lose a lot of money, basically. And although I'd have my really cool app for myself, uh, you know, I'd rather not lose $6,000 on this. So I ended up deciding that I wasn't going to follow through with it. And I wasn't satisfied with that because the polls were decent and I felt like this app was just a lot of untapped potential and that I, I wanted to look further into it. So after a week, uh, I ended up posting another thing on Reddit 
and I just posted the video. Who else wants an audio visualizer on their touch bar? And uh, I just posted it in the MacBook Pro Reddit, and it did really well. And it was the top post for May. And looking at the, the top posts of the year, it would rank about number two. And so I was like, okay, maybe I actually have something here. Maybe this is something that people would really be interested in actually getting. So that's where I am right now. Uh, I'm talking to you guys about it because I would really like some more opinions on this. And, and while the Reddit post is a good sign, it's not enough really to push me over the edge to say the risk assessment makes sense to make an app like this. So I kind of wanted to run through exactly how I ended up where I am. So some of the research that I did, I went online and I found this code. I can't remember who exactly wrote this code, but I ended up getting it working on my computer. And basically what it does is it's a volume reader that you can use in your terminal and it's written in Python. And so when I got this working, I was like, oh, this is a huge advancement. And there were other pieces to this that were that allowed a, an actual audio vis visualization uh, picture to be output. And I was like, okay, if we can get this working, then it would be super cool to just put it into better touch tool. And great. So I'll show you exactly what it does. So if you run this in your terminal, it will output. So you can see it's going to output basically pound signs for the amount of noise that's coming. So I'll move my mic over here a little bit and then I'll start clapping. And you can see that it outputs the noise when it picks it up. And it runs for like 30 seconds or whatever. So it's probably just gonna keep running. So I posted on the Better Touch Tool forums and I was like, hey, I have this running in Python. I can't really get it working in Better Touch Tool. What's going on? And basically the developer of Better Touch Tool responded that you can't stream data from Python in Better Touch Tool. You can only do a single line output, which is why the YouTube subscriber count works, but you can't uh, continuously stream data. So that is unfortunate. And he said that you would have to write the program in basically Swift or Objective-C to make it compatible with Better Touch Tool. So I started scouring the internet again and basically looking for applications that I could apply to Better Touch Tool that were written in Swift. So I found out that you can use AudioKit, which is written in Swift. They have a audio visualizer built into their sample, uh, sample program. So I went and I got this working. <laughs> you can't believe how long this took me to get working. It, it was, it shouldn't have taken me this long, but <laughs> got the build all succeeded. So you'll see that this pops up in a second here. You'll see that there's a, an audio visualizer. There it is. So you can see it's a it's a very basic audio visualizer, but it gives you uh, a little spectrum. And if you speak louder, it uses the microphone um, in your computer. So I'll use my mic over here and I'll start clapping again. And you can see that it is working. So I have been really trying to research how I can get that graph to show up on the touch bar. It is very complicated because I don't understand Swift, let alone the using Swift to code for the touch bar. It's quite complicated and there are not many resources out there. Coding for MacBooks is not that big, it seems like, on the spectrum of coding programs. It's way easier to find an iOS developer than it is a macOS developer. And then on top of that, you're niching down again to try and put this thing on the touch bar, which Apple certainly has no documentation on doing because it doesn't approve of things like this. And then there is the question of the where is the audio coming from? So on Macs, Apple kind of has their internal system audio on lockdown. It is like a pain in the butt to, to create an app that uses the internal system audio. And if you've ever tried to record something that's like recording a microphone and the system internal audio, you might realize, oh crap, like it's actually not that simple to do that. Uh, you know, you could download this app called Soundflower, which 
is great and does the coding for you to be able to create a, a virtual audio output that you can use to record both of those things. And so from the developers that I talked to that said that they had the ability to create an app like this, they said that basically we would have to write our own audio driver that would create this virtual audio output on the system. And then when they close the app, basically the output goes back to what it was before. And that's a main reason why the estimates that I got to create this app were in the six to $10,000 range. The other thing I was thinking about is I think it would be amazing to have this as a better touch tool widget, which like makes complete sense. And I would 100% love to do that. I just don't have the coding knowledge really to be able to accomplish that and on on multiple levels. So, you know, it would have to be coded in Swift and I don't know Swift well at all. And then the audio drivers would have to be written in Objective-C, I believe, or, you know, C++ or whatever the audio drivers are written in. And that's where my knowledge stops is that I would have to pay somebody to do it or find somebody that loves this project as much as I do and that is willing to basically put the time in. I think that might be difficult considering how much the developers I talked to were going to charge for this. So I don't know. If you guys have thoughts, please comment them down below. I would love to hear them and put whatever honest feedback you have. If you think this is stupid, tell me it's stupid. I'm not going to have my feelings hurt. If anything, I'll be like, okay, you know, I will be thankful that somebody said it was stupid and, you know, the I probably wouldn't get my money back. But if you do love it, tell me you love it. And if this is something that you'd be interested in and buying, then that's great. Let me know down below. Hope you guys enjoy this this app idea, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading your feedback. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.